Secrets that are hidden under our vast bodies of water are often left unraveled. However, today we're going to be diving down deep to understand what these eerie underwater sculptures are for. Osborne Reef In the 1970s, millions of tires were dumped off the coast of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. This created an artificial reef known as the Osborne Reef. The structure is made up of over 2 million tires bundled together with steel clips and nylon straps. With the support of over 100 privately owned vessels and lots of public fanfare, thousands of tire bundles were sunk into the ocean and Osborne Reef was born. During those times, waste tires were causing a growing environmental problem. They were being dumped illegally and overcrowding landfills. In response, a non-profit group of fishermen proposed a creative solution. That is to recycle old tires and use them as artificial reefs to promote the growth of new coral and attract game fish to Florida's waters. This plan was widely supported by the public and eventually endorsed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, as well as state and local governments. However, the project turned out to be a major environmental disaster instead. It left a watery wasteland with loose tires damaging the corals, creating cancer in the reef. Now, undoing the damage caused by the project, which took mere weeks to complete, is taking decades and hundreds of millions to fix. Underwater Train Wreck Though it's usual to find shipwrecks at the bottom of the sea, it's almost unthinkable to find a train under it, let alone two locomotives. But nothing's ever impossible, and off the coast of New Jersey, two 19th century steam trains were found 90 feet underwater. The locomotives were discovered in 1995 when a boat's magnometer detected them. Ever since, a lot of explorations have been done to learn more about the peculiar vehicles. One of the few significant things discovered were whistles that had the inscription H.N. Hooper Boston. H.N. Hooper was founded by Mr. Henry N. Hooper in the 1830s. It's believed that the locomotives were manufactured by the Seth Wilmarth Union Works in South Boston and transported by barge to the Mid-Atlantic. The prevailing theory is that a storm caused the barge to veer off course and crash five miles off the coast of Long Branch, New Jersey, sending the locomotives tumbling off the ship and into the depths of the ocean. Alternatively, it's been speculated that the workers deliberately dropped the locomotives into the water to lighten the load of the barge and avoid capsizing. When the log of the ship was discovered, it strangely revealed no records of the two locomotives on board. To this day, the origin of the trains and how they ended up sunken underwater remain a mystery. Road to Atlantis The Bimini Road, also known as the Bimini Wall, is an underwater rock formation located off the coast of North Bimini Island in the Bahamas. It is believed to be a part of a road or wall built by the ancient civilization of Atlantis. It's made up of a series of large rectangular limestone blocks that are arranged in a geometric pattern and is approximately 600 feet long. The formation has been an object of much interest since its discovery in 1968 by marine biologist Dr. J. Manson Valentine. Some people see it as evidence of an advanced civilization that lived in Atlantis. Others have suggested that the stones are the remains of a road built by the Lucayan Indians or that they're the remains of an ancient harbor. Despite much research and speculation, the origin of the Bimini Road remains a mystery. Despite the unknown, the Bimini Road is a popular destination for snorkelers and divers who come to explore the formations and observe the array of coral and sea life that thrive in the area. Hedonistic Sunken City of the Caesars, or Kaisers in this case. The Hedonistic Sunken City of the Kaisers was lost for over 17 centuries under the waters of Italy's west coast. That was until divers in the area rediscovered it, of course. Thought to be the remnants of the once thriving ancient Roman city of Bayet, the ruins were first discovered in 1999. Since then, the site has been a source of much archaeological curiosity and intrigue. Built by the Kaisers, an illustrious Roman dynasty, Bayet was renowned in its time for its wealth, luxury, and decadent lifestyle. It's believed to have been home to a thriving community of merchants and traders who prospered from the many luxury goods that were traded in the city's bustling markets. It was also home to lavish temples, public baths, and other areas of relaxation and pleasure. It's thought that the city was home to some of the most luxurious vias of the time, as well as lavish gardens and parks, making it a popular destination for the wealthy and powerful. In its heyday, Bayet was a popular destination for several prominent Roman Kaisars, including Julius Caesar, Nero, and Hadrian, whose death there earned the nickname the Sunken City of the Kaisars, or Caesars again. It was known for its stunning beauty and abundance of amenities, and was a popular spot for relaxation and entertainment for the Roman elite. Over the centuries, however, the city became submerged, giving rise to a newer title. Bayet's legacy still lives to this day, with the ruins of its once glorious structure still visible beneath the waters of the Gulf of Naples. Japan's Underwater Pyramid Off the coast of Yonaguni, Japan, an underwater pyramid known as the Yonaguni Monument can be found. 
It's believed to be the remains of an ancient sunken city and has been the subject of much speculation and debate since it was discovered in 1987. It's a complex structure consisting of the main platform with several terraces, each with a staircase leading to the next level. There are several other structures nearby, including a rectangular stone monolith and a large stone arch. The rectangular monument, which was first detected by a scuba diver, is more than 165 feet or 50 meters long and some 65 feet or 20 meters wide. The exact age of the monument is unknown, but it's believed to be thousands of years old. Some researchers have suggested that it was constructed by a lost civilization of Mu or Lemuria. Others have argued that it's a natural formation, or the result of tectonic activity. Either way, no matter what its origin, the Yonaguni Monument is a fascinating and mysterious structure that continues to captivate visitors and researchers alike. Spain's Underwater Stonehenge The Dolmen of Guadalperal, better known as Spanish Stonehenge, is a megalithic monument located in the province of Casare, Spain. Discovered over a hundred years ago, it was submerged underwater after a dam was created. But then, the worst drought in 500 years caused it to re-emerge in a corner of the Valdecanas Reservoir. It's consisting of dozens of dolmens, with each stone believed to date back to 5000 BC. The water level has dropped to 28% capacity, allowing archaeologists to access the site and marvel at the ancient structure. Dolmens are structures that have been scattered around Europe for thousands of years. They consist of a large, flat boulder resting atop several vertically arranged stones, and their purpose remains largely unknown. While some believe they were used as burial chambers or religious temples, their true purpose remains a mystery. Many theories have been proposed to explain their existence, but there's still no definitive answer. Paluxy River Dinosaur Footprints Multiple fossilized ancient dinosaur footprints dating back to more than 100 million years ago have been discovered in the bed of Paluxy River. The most common tracks are from the Acrocanthosaurus as well as the Sora Poseidon. But there have also been some from other types of dinosaurs, such as the sauropod and the ornithinopod. The Paluxy River tracks are some of the most well-preserved dino tracks in the world, and experts believe this is due to the calcium carbonate deposits from the shells of crustaceans in the mud of the river. These deposits create an ideal consistency for the preservation of the tracks. The recent drought has revealed a marvelous sight, dino footprints in the dried-up riverbed. These deep grooves measuring several human hands across have never been seen before, and offer a unique glimpse into the past. Now it's time for the day's best pick. Today's photo displays an eerie array of sculptures resembling cursed people turned to stone. However, these sculptures have an environmental purpose that is far from being cursed. The Bankers Sculptures with their head under the sand and appearing to struggle to pull their heads back out were discovered underwater in Cancun, Mexico. The life-size sculptures created by Jason DeCaris Taylor entitled The Bankers are part of the Cancun Underwater Museum. The sculptures are designed to draw attention to environmental issues such as ocean acidification, coral bleaching, and global warming. In total, Jason created over 500 permanent sculptures for the museum. The sculptures are created with special pH-neutral cement that allows for the growth of coral and other aquatic life. The museum has been a success, with the sculptures now home to colorful sponges, sea fans, and a variety of fish. Underwater Sculpture Park in Granada the Underwater Sculpture Park in Granada is an eco-friendly underwater sculpture museum located off the west coast of the island of Granada. It was founded in 2006 by British sculptor Jason DeCaris Taylor and it's widely acclaimed as the first of its kind. The site is now listed as one of National Geographic's 25 Wonders of the World. The park consists of over 65 life-size sculptures made from pH-neutral concrete, which encourages coral growth and development of an artificial reef. Among its iconic sculptures are Chris of the Deep, the Lost Correspondent, and the Vivisitudes. The Vivisitudes feature a group of 26 Grenadian children interlocked in a circular formation. It's been interpreted in many ways, such as representing the circle of life, the lives of slaves thrown off ships, or even the lives of those slaves being cut off. Yet its true meaning remains largely a mystery. Monster Raised from the Baltic Sea the figurehead of a 15th century ship has been discovered from the Baltic Sea near Ronneby, Sweden, after more than 500 years underwater. It's a remarkable discovery, crafted from the image of a sea monster or dragon, a never before seen creation for ships in the modern world. Researchers suggest that the figurehead may have belonged to the Gribschunden, a ship believed to be the world's best preserved late medieval sea vessel. It was a Danish ship built in 1495. It was actually the flagship of King John of Denmark and was one of the most advanced ships of its time. The ship dates back to the time of Columbus's voyage across the ocean, making it a remarkable discovery that could provide valuable insights into the construction techniques of ships during that era. See you all next time!